have some issues in my cell data. For example, these two orange ones are a duplicate. Um, this one, Tom Holland, is not the same as this one. Um, or Chris Pratt, this is uppercase versus uppercase. And then there are some other issues as well that I want to be able to get an error log like this that can give me, for example, um, are these non-exact matches, are these duplicates, or are these missing in one table from the other one? For example, like Scarlett Johansson just doesn't appear on this table at all. So you can do this with Power Query and it's automatically updated. So for example, if I cut and paste the data in here and my data set grows, then when I click on this, right click and refresh, I get the new errors logging as well. Or I can do it here as well, Paul Rudd changes from missing into a non-exact match. If I click refresh, non-exact like that. So I'm gonna show you how to build this in your Excel. My name is David and I'm, and I have plenty of videos that I keep publishing every week on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Power Query, Google Sheets, Team, Zoom, all sorts of business technology. If you like what you see, then click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to just take this table and I'm going to paste special, but I'm only going to paste, say, values like that. So we want to bring this into this tool called Power Query. What we're going to do is we're going to select the table and we're going to choose to go to the data tab and from table arrange. Some versions of it work with 2016 as well. Where's the data for your table? Press OK. And then you load it up into the Power Query editor. Um, the Power Query editor opens up a whole new window that's not even Excel anymore. If you've never seen this before, then I highly advise learning about Power Query. I have lots of videos about it because it can do all sorts of things to change and reshape and grab data from different places. So um, I've got this, I've loaded it. It called it table 11 because it wasn't previously loaded. I'm going to change that to be my um, checks. So I already have my table with issues. I'm not going to reload that. I just loaded it in exactly the same way, but I'm going to check this into this. So um, for this example, I've got three things that I want to check. There are other things that you could use it for, but we're going to do it just for these three things, just to get the general theme and the general concept. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for non-matches. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to the home tab and choose merge queries, merge queries as new. And I'm going to do this one with the checks table. And I'm going to go actors with name. And it tells me that it's found nine out of 16 rows from the first table. Now, if I press okay immediately, it loads, it's got the same number of rows in the original one and in the later one. Now we can either check for issues, which could be a number of things, or we could do a very quick check for anything that is in one table, but not the other one. So I'm going to do the quick one first, and then I'll go into the longer one in a second. So I'm going to say I want to, again, merge queries as new, and I'm going to merge the table with issues, and I'm going to merge that with the checks table. And I'm going to say, well, I want to match this one and this one. And I can say that I want a left anti. I love a left anti join because this shows what is excluded. So anything that is in the first table but not in the second table will join. Press OK. And you get it to show you there. Um, if I was to expand this, this would just be blank everywhere because I already know there are no matches. So that's not particularly useful. And I can just choose columns and get rid of the last column checks like this. But just to show you a little trick, if you want to change it and merge on two columns, you can click back there and control click that one as one and that one as two, this one as one, this one as two, and then it excludes a different number of rows and it will give you a lot more non-matches like that. So that's a handy little trick that you can't do with VLOOKUP, but it's pretty easy to do with merge queries. Let's now go back to the other kind of more robust process. So go back to the other query we talked about before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the 
join type because I want it to give me all of the ones that are also in the checks table but not in the original table. So Power Query loads with this on the side and if you've got this button that means you can change it. In this case I'm going to say I want the join kind to be a full outer. I have another video where I explain more about these join types that I'll link to as well. And it says here the selection matches 9 of 16 rows from the first table and 3 of 7 from the second table. I press OK and then for my next step I can just click here to expand. All I want really is the name table. I don't care about the other stuff there. As you can see, it's not match Chris Pratt with Chris Pratt because the Power Query is case sensitive. Um, and also it hasn't matched Tom Holland because that's a misspelling. Similar what you'd expect with lookup functions, um, it wouldn't match it because it's a misspelling. Although lookup match functions would match this if it's lowercase. Um, just to show you, I can change that by going back to the first query, which is this one. And I can say in this column, I can say transform and I can choose to format and capitalize each word. And then if I go back to my merge one column, now Chris Pratt is matched because anything that you do earlier will af affect this later query here. Well, first let me um, undo what I did over here, which is capitalize each word because we're going to see this worked in a different way here. So now I'm going to go to the home tab again and I'm going to merge queries, but this time in place, not as new. And I'm going to merge the actor table with the same table again, the checks table with the name here. But I'm going to keep it as left outer because I wanted to return the same number of rows, although I'm going to use fuzzy matching. What fuzzy matching does is it uses um, approximations to find out what it could be. So the default, if I go here, this could be 0 0.8. I'm going to leave that as blank because 0 0.8 is fine enough and ignore case, ignore matching text box. So you can also specify maximum number of matches on the transformation table. I'm going to leave those blank because I have another video explaining them as we go along. So here I can expand it and I'm going to choose now the movie column like this. So now I can see that it's managed to find Tom Holland with a double D versus with one D. Well, next I'm going to do some filtering because effectively, if anything have found a match, that's not an issue, so I don't need this to show up. So I'm going to actually click on the filter and I'm going to only keep the null ones. And then I'm going to look at this column and I can see the non-exact matches say something in name one, but the non-matches say null here. So I'm going to go to add column and choose a conditional column. I'm going to say if name one equals null, then this is a non match. Otherwise it's non exact. I can keep it named as custom for now. Next, I'm going to uh, check for duplicates. So to do this, go to this table here and we're not going to remove the duplicates here because this will affect what happens in the merges. Um, Instead, we're going to right click on it and choose to reference it. And this is going to be duplicates, check. And then here we can remove the duplicates, but that's actually not very useful because if I straight up remove the duplicates, then it doesn't give me any information about which ones were the problems to begin with. So instead of what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use another action called keep duplicates. Now this needs to apply to the whole table. So if you click on this, this is table wide actions and you can choose keep duplicates. So the other way is you can select all the columns, home tab, keep rows and keep duplicates. But that's also not great because now I've actually got two of each. So after I keep duplicates, I'm actually going to remove duplicates. And this might seem counterintuitive, but I use this method all the time. Next, I'm going to add a column and since these are all duplicates, I'm just going to add a custom column. I'm going to say this is duplicates. Keep that as custom. It's important that it's the same name uh, because when we do a, an append queries now, we're going to combine these two 
screen to go to the home tab and choose event queries as new. And we're going to say duplicates check is going to be appended with merge one. We might want to rename that if we're doing this in the real world. And then we're going to load it like this. As you can see, the first four columns are showing there. But what a pen does is it will take uh, the column names from something and stack them on top if they're the same matches. Note though that if I go back here and for some reason I name this something like issues, this is bad because it won't stack them on top of each other. So here I've got issues with these two and here I've got custom with these ones. So I'm going to go back and rename that to just custom as it was initially. The other thing I want to do is I'll go to merge and I don't need these name and name one columns after I've extracted what I need. So I can go to choose columns and untick both of those like that. Now my append one as it's called is looking pretty neat and I'm going to call this the issues log. Notice that if you want to see the views, you have a view here and the query dependencies view is quite useful. Here I've got my issues log, which is a combination of the merge one and the duplicates check. And in turn, the merge one is a combination of table with issues and the checks table. Whereas this is a directed, a direct reference from the table with issues and everything comes from the current workbook. Although the same method works if you are getting data from another Excel file, from a CSV file, a text file, or even from a folder of Excel files. Uh, you can, in fact, from Power Query, you can get data from all those kind of things, including this folder. I have another video where I go more into a lot of detail about this folder. Uh, once you've got what you needed, um, you can close and load. Now, before you do that, I'm going to change the settings um, on my Power Query, show you how to do that. Go to File Options and Settings, Query Options. So if you are going to do this sort of thing, then always go to this, change the data load settings, specify custom load settings and untick everything. Otherwise it will just load these four queries that we've just built each into their own worksheet, which is not what you want. Instead, click this and then we'll load only specifically what we want to do. From here, we're going to close and load. We're not going to load them uh, load two because that would load everyone in the worksheet. And then once we have what we need, the issues log is the only one we want to load. So I'm going to right click there and choose load two and load to a table in an existing worksheet. And it shows them up here. And just like I showed you before, this is dynamic. So if I cut and paste here and cut and paste here, then I can right click here and choose refresh and it will show you um, all of those differences there as it's gone there. Now we've talked about duplicates, non-matches and non-exacts, but you could also use this for a number of other things. For example, is it out of range? I.e. it can't be a negative number or it can't be too high. Even out of a date range, for example, if you know it must be in 2017, or even it's very possible that it was in 2018, but it's very unlikely um, in a certain combination, maybe for example, this person was only acting from or until a certain date. Um, and then error in source. So if you've got an error in source, generally Power Query will just put it as a blank there. They will indicate it in the user interface as well. It does limit you from being able to do a lot of things. So this sort of method to create an issues log is something that I really, really love doing. Um, my name is David and I'm, and I have loved making this video for you. I have lots more videos about Excel, Google Sheets, Power Query, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, etc. So please feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want more awesome content.